I've had this question for nearly two years now. When you order a helmet, say any of these, it usually comes with the manufacturer's logo on the side. But if you watch an IPL match, you will realize that these manufacturer logos are actually blacked out. I think on almost all players, you'll see that there's a tape which hides the manufacturer's logo. And this is very strange because right above the manufacturer's logo, there's a branded logo. And then you have the team emblem in the front, and then you have a logo on the back. So I did a little research and tried to understand what's the story behind the IPL helmets. Let's talk about that. trend is rather unique to the IPL because in any of the international matches, the manufacturer's logo is one of the first things that you'll notice on any cricketing gear. Now the reason that it is this way is because there's a book for the regulations of the clothing of the IPL. And in that rule book you'll see where the commercial logos are supposed to be, where it's not supposed to be, how many logos can you actually put on a team's jersey, on a helmet, on the socks. It's very particular and it's very weird because it says that there should be no manufacturer's logo on the sides of the headwear. But the thing is that it didn't used to be this way. Back in the early days of the IPL, people were very free to wear whatever they wanted to on their head. The rules weren't as strict. So something changed between then and when this trend started persisting more commonly somewhere around 2014. And an update on the IPL situation after the High Court rejected Kochi Tusker's plea against the BCCI. Sponsors revealed that they never really backed the team wholeheartedly, hedging their risks by signing short-term contracts only. It's time running out for the Deccan Chargers. Deccan Chronicle Holdings has defaulted on loans. BCCI ne IPL ke Pune Warriors team ke saath karar khatm kar diya hai. Sahara ne Pune ke team ke badle BCCI ko franchisee fees ada nahi ki thi. I want to talk about how making money in the IPL is not as easy as one would perceive it to be. There are a lot of ways by which an IPL team or IPL can make money. There's media rights, there's players auction, but more importantly for their video, there are commercial sponsorships. If you look at an IPL jersey, say this from 2018, I guess. The logos on this shirt that you see here on the sleeves, on the back and in the front, the logos on these shirts are basically sponsorship deals. Any IPL jersey is allowed to have six of these commercial logos. And it's been this way since the very beginning. This is a jersey from 2010, 2011, and it has the same six commercial logos on it. These are ridiculously money-making. Manchester United received $560 million for a seven-year deal from Chevrolet. That is $80 million every single year just to have the logo on top of the t-shirt. The more interesting part for me is why invest so much money in representing your company in a sport that's not even your primary focus in the country where you belong. And that's because all of this just boils down to what exposure you are getting. Football is the most watched sport in the world. And if you have a logo on top of, say, a Ronaldo, who is one of the most followed people in the world, the exposure that you get in terms of eyeballs is unparalleled. I'll give you an example. I'll put you in a bit of a specific scenario. Imagine that you're the chief of a company, say, Emirates. Would you want your marketing campaign to be reflected by this picture? or by this picture. In fact, there's a brilliant study about how human faces enable more effective marketing and more effective exposure strategies for companies to showcase the products that they have. If you're an IPL team or the BCCI, the amount of money that you receive from a manufacturer who is supplying you with kits is vastly different to the amount of money that you will receive from a commercial sponsor. Commercial sponsorships are much more lucrative financially and teams obviously would want to maximize that. And these sponsorship deals are rather interesting because a lot of marketing research being put into where a logo should be placed on a sporting jersey. Cricket in India has one of the highest viewership on, for any television and what broadcasters choose to put on screen 
is making teams money. Just imagine you're watching a game. What are some of the visuals that you see more frequently? And you'll realize that one of the shots that the broadcasters show is the helmet shot. There's a reason why in the clothing rule book, the BCCI has mentioned different positions for commercial logos for different handed batsmen. Because the way that you face the camera when you're batting left-handed is different from the way that you face the camera when you're batting right-handed. So essentially, they're trying to maximize the number of logos that a person can see in this sort of a money shot in any IPL match. And here's a fun fact. They allow the manufacturer's logo, but it's on the back side of the helmet, over here. So if this is all just marketing strategy, why can't we have both the logos side by side? Well, I've got a demo for you. Okay, for the sake of argument, let's say that you're from Shaw and you want to sponsor this helmet. So which one do you think will make you buy a Shaw product? Do you think this will make you buy a Shaw product? Or do you think this will make you buy a short product. When the manufacturer's logo is blacked out, your eyes are almost instantly devoted to the show logo. But when it's not, it has to fight for it. This can help you make more money from show because you're giving them undivided attention of the viewer. But why this need to maximize profits? The manufacturer here is clearly the most important player. The reason that I bought this helmet was because I saw Virat Kohli wearing this. I didn't buy it because it had Geo written over it. But the more interesting part here that even with all of these commercial sponsorships, teams are struggling to make profits. The IPL today is in its 15th year and even the teams which started with the IPL, like the Rajasthan Royals and the Kings XI Punjab, Teams like these have had difficulties in posting successive or rather consistent profits throughout the seasons. In fact, until 2015-2016, only KKR was one of the teams which was able to post high consistent revenues. And you would think that probably winning the championship would affect revenue streams, but that's not the case. I would like to read a few numbers for you. India Wayne Sports Private Limited, which runs Mumbai Indians, reported 220 crores in the season of 2013-2014, the year it won its first IPL. But that very year, it reported a loss of 5 crores. And it doesn't really stop they take another popular team like the RCB which had stars like Virat Kohli, like AB de Villiers, like Chris Gale. They have reported some of the most massive losses in IPL history. On an average, a team usually produces about 25 to 40 crores every season from sponsorship money, which is clearly not enough. Teams have been really struggling with the current revenue model of the IPL and maximizing the sponsorship is not something that they do out of greed. They do it out of necessity. They do it just for the fact that they could survive. I would just like to say that this is all conjecture, what was based on the evidence that I found and the research that I did. And even though I tried to reach out to manufacturers, to players managers, to team managers, to logistic managers, I didn't really get a lot of response from them, which is understandable. I think what was more interesting to study was just how important and how influential marketing is when you're watching a simple game of cricket. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.